eight days. Starting on Sunday, September 29th, every spotted table game you play can earn entries to the eight grand prize draw. All it takes is one swipe for the chance to drive home behind the wheel of a brand new Ford Raptor. Don't miss your chance to play eight cars, eight days this October. Visit the M Life Rewards desk for details. Must be 21 or older. Grand times ahead. You've reached the high fashion hotline. Good news. Right now, I'm just inviting people on before we get started. You want something to drink? Yeah, a little sip of something. Little sip of something. Yes, yeah, little sip. You take a sip. I take a sip. You take a sip. Okay. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Hello, y'all. I'm just inviting people if you're tuning in. That's all. Hey, hey. How are you? I hope you're enjoying your day today. Hey, look. Somebody said, hey, grandma. Hey. Oh, that's, um... That's Bert. That's how, Albert. How are you? Ooh. Albert. Oh, Bert. My, my grandson. Yeah, <laughs> yeah your grandson. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> Whoa. I just fist bumped you back. You can't turn your phone on for a lot. Whoa. There we go. He said, love you. Who said that? Albert. Oh, okay. <laughs> Tell all your fans. This the Instagram granny, y'all. <laughs> you gonna tell them hi? Hello, hello, how are you? Say hello, you? TV land. <laughs> All right, let's get it popping. All right, thank you. You're very welcome. You mind scooting over a little smidget for me, Grandma? All right. So I can get in the shot with you, girlfriend. Get in now. Yes, ma'am. I only need a little bit of space. All right. All right. <laughs> Hello. Listen, it's your girl, Jaja. You're listening to Yeah, I Said It on Yeah, I Said It Radio. And I have my special guest with me, the one and only Miss Elizabeth Jones. Tell them I said what up, doubt. What up, though? <laughs> Listen, y'all. I am so grateful and so appreciative that um, she was able to take the time out to meet with me today and be my special guest and it's always a blessing to have wisdom around and you got a birthday coming up right your birthday is on the 14th sunday sunday you'll be how old ma'am you mind telling your age to the 81, people thank, thank god 81 years young okay and um i'm extremely grateful because it is breast cancer awareness month it is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and we definitely want to make sure that we keep people um, up to date as to what's going on in your life, um, what's going on in the world, and how it affects us. And so today we're going to talk about um, some challenges and some things that you've gone through um, out of 80, 80 years of living. <laughs> you've been through a lot. You've been through some stuff. Oh, yeah. You, what, what, what's one of the things... Out of almost 81 years that hasn't changed. One thing that you can say that has not changed. That you can say has been consistent with how 
you know, music has changed, fashion has changed, yes. presidents have changed. You've seen yes. tons of presidents come and go. Right. Um, you've seen trends come and go. What can you say has been consistently the same for you? Same for me. Mm-hmm. Working out things go. Yeah. Going to church, man. Yes. Attending the church. And Watching my grandchildren grow up <laughs> from birth to the ages now. And thank God for them. Yes. And I love all of them. Yes. Now, Grandma, you were um, you were diagnosed with stage four breast cancer. Correct. And that was last year. Right. And you you did chemo. No, you didn't do chemo, but you did radiation. Right. Tell us a little bit about when they told you, when you first heard the words, you cancer. have breast cancer. <laughs> like what what was going on through your head when you when you were when you were told that? Uh, I said, Oh my goodness. <laughs> what? How? Uh could this be? Mm-hmm. I've been going getting my radiate I mean my mammograms, but then I failed to get a few of them. So I'm encouraging everyone to get your mammogram every year and feel your own breast and then bring it to the doctor's uh bring it to the doctor's attention where it's located and then you go ahead and have your vibes but be sure because it's a shocking experience now with that being said you you heard you knew about cancer you knew about breast cancer right um you just you just were shocked that you had to hear that. Now, what was one of the decisions that made you not want to get chemo? Because you did get I radiation. Make, uh, someone told me it would make me sick, real sick. It would upset my stomach and various other things. So I chose the radiation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had seven, I mean, 10. Treatments? Treatments. Okay. So during those treatments, what was going through your mind? Like you, you, it's, you know, when you're dealing with radiation, that's a different type of, it's not just a regular checkup. You know, you go to the doctor, you take your clothes off, you get there, you put your gown on and then you leave. They check you, give you all your stuff. Like, what were you thinking? You know, cause people hear cancer and the first thing they think about is, am I going to die? Right. Right. And how much longer I have to live. Yeah. So but as of now, thank God with with my doctors and with my God. Yes, God and doctor. I am still alive. Yes. Now you have a uh, doctor, Doctor C, uh, Doctor Shevinowski, uh, over at um, one of the doctor offices in Hazel Park. And I, I want to send a shout out to Dr. C over at, um, uh, what is it, St. John? What, what is it? St. John, I guess. Well, I don't know, but it's on Nine Mile in Hazel Park. And her name is Dr. Patricia uh, Sevanowski. And she's on John R. She's on John R. And yeah, Maple, Maple Dale. In Maple Dale. And um, she's a phenomenal physician. And one of the things that I love about um, her doctor is the fact that, uh, and I say this because of my own experience, because I take her to the doctor. Um, I love how she interacts with you. I love yes. how she doesn't rush your visit, even though we be in there forever. Um, <laughs> but, you have to say that. <laughs> but, but I will say um, she's, she's very attentive. Um, she's very detailed in the questions that she asks, opposed to one of the other doctors that was trying to get you a, a bone uh, infusion. They wanted to, they kept pressing you to get this bone infusion treatment um, that was new. 
And what what was what was the determining factor for you not to take that that bone radiation? What was one of the reasons why you didn't do it? Because it affects some people and and and, and they do uh, different things. Uh, they it could paralyze you. It could do this. Or it could do that. And some of the things I did not understand, so I did not want. It. Now speaking of not understanding. Did you ever, during this time frame, feel like you weren't being educated on what was happening with you? Like, were doctors talking at you, like above your head? How did you feel about the communication that was that you were given? Oh, it was good. Mm -hmm. It was very good. Okay. Yeah. So how how was family support, or how important is family support during? a loved one who has breast cancer or cancer in general or going through an illness? Oh, my daughter's has been nice and understanding. And my granddaughters, especially this one, uh, like she said, she take me to the, uh, to, to the <laughs> doctor's appointments. And all my other grandchildren and great grands. And great great. You got you a great great great. Right. Shout but out to all, all the grandmas, great grandmas, great 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 grandmas. Right. And they come and visit me and some come and help or wash for me. And <laughs> when I first came home, uh yeah, they had to help me bathe and I had to gain my weight and my strength back. So yeah, I give a shout out to my husband. Shout out to Granddaddy Charles. Now, I want to talk about how important is it for families to support their loved ones that are ill? Because you you have a unsurmountable amount of strength. Um, you've had to bury your two sons. Yes. You've had oh, to bury God. your one daughter. Correct. And you've had to watch your siblings pass on. Um, I, how many siblings is it of you guys? I think it's 21. 20, I, 21 but, siblings. But they I, was getting busy. 21. I only knew about seven. Out of 21 brothers and sisters, you only yes. know seven of them? Yes. Wow. Cause and you, I only had one brother left. And you only had one brother left out of the seven. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. To be a freak. What? Shout out to the Buford family out there. Look, hey cousins out there, out there in the streets. See me when you see me. Act like you know me. Look, but if I don't know, maybe they. I shouldn't know them. I don't know, Grandma. You know, sometimes you, you know how the world is set up. You don't know who you're related to. Um, me and my grandma were talking earlier. Um, about you know just some different people, and um, you know I told her I said I don't want to. I want to make sure I'm not dating my cousin because. <laughs> You know, a lot of us are cross related and we don't even know. And, um, although Detroit is big in size, we're very small when it comes to, uh, pockets of families, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, you having 21 siblings, knowing seven of them, and then you and your brother are the only two that are remaining that are alive. Uh, what do you, what do you want to tell family members out there? who don't communicate with one another or they're having a turmoil within the family, um, how important it is to stick together and to work together, especially knowing that you've had to bury three of your children, bury your siblings. How important is the family structure? Oh, it should be, uh, you should love each other and whatever your differences are, you should get together and uh, forgive each other. And first, if you do someone wrong, you ask for forgiveness or you give that person forgiveness within yourself. So uh, uh, you free yourself yeah. of what you have said or done to to that person. Yeah. And then hopefully the person will come to you or you can go to them and ask for forgiveness. Why do you think that's so hard for people to apologize? Because they are ashamed or maybe it just hateful, uh, hateful within themselves. Now, speaking of um, forgiveness and hatefulness within themselves, you know, this is also 
Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Um, it's also Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And it's also Literacy Awareness Month. And you are from Arkansas. Correct. You good? Now yeah, don't choke correct. on me on the live now. Yeah. Hold your arms up now. Nobody got tabs today, Grandma. We <laughs> now. Uh, you you're from Arkansas. What part of Arkansas are you from? Uh, half A G T H. Now where is that on from? The map map. What? One uh, hundred forty nine. Forty nine. Route forty nine. Route fifty. Okay. And what major city is that by in Arkansas? Forest City was the largest one. Okay. Forest City and what Arkansas, other major? Yeah. What, is that by Little Rock? No, it's quite a ways from Little Rock. Okay. It's probably about a hundred so miles away away. That's the largest one to say. Is that the capital? I forgot. Now you you're from Arkansas, uh, one of the most racist uh states growing up. Right. Um, you're the daughter of a, a slave. Um and how was that growing up? Um <laughs> Knowing where we are right now in our country, um, our president who openly, um, you know, mocks women um, and the disparities with women, the socioeconomic disparities within, um, I don't like to call us minorities because we're really the majority, they're the minority, but the role that um, Caucasians have played and white people have played in the lives of black people, especially black women growing up. Um, as a black woman, um, already dealing with racism, already dealing with sexism, already dealing with, um, and, and you're and you're light skinned. You were light skinned during that time too, which was a big challenge for those that had darker pigmentations and darker skin, and you were lighter. How was that growing up? Because you was you was a cold piece, grandma. You I listen, y'all. You see where I get my hot cheekbones from? Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um. You were a cold piece. So how was that growing up, knowing the sexual abuse and sexual misconduct that you've seen these past few weeks with um, uh, Brett Kavanaugh and our president and the Me Too movement for those who have been assaulted, molested, raped? How was that growing up during that time frame? The same things was happening. Uh, no one would come forward to speak on it, because if you did, no one would believe you. And if they did believe you, uh, they didn't have any help. And most most women, uh, young women, that was uh, uh, sexually uh, assaulted, assaulted mm -hmm. uh, Wait a minute. Abused. And abused. Mm -hmm. They, you know, didn't have access to lawyers. They, we knew some of the things that we could do. Mainly, you go and tell your parents. Mm -hmm. And if you tell one, then that, he's going, he or she is going to tell the other one. And some people will believe it. But in some cases, some mothers kept it a secret because it was the way that we had to live. Yeah. So knowing that it's 2018 right now, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of those things were happening in the 40s, the 50s, 50s and, the 60s. and the 60s. And now you fast forward to 2018 and you still see it happening. Yes. How does that make you feel? Well, it's upsetting, but I'm proud that uh, the females are coming forward. Yeah. I um, I had a situation um, last week where I was going to visit one of my business partners, um, Steve Edwards. I don't know if he's chimed in or not, but um, I was really, I was really saddened that, um, we were we were having a meeting and um, a young lady was there and I don't know if she wants me to disclose her name but I'll just say um, her name's I'll I'll just say her name starts with a J 
And so um, the young lady was being tormented by a, a ex that she had been dating and they had been broken up for almost three months. And the guy was calling her, telling it, telling her he was going to kill her, telling her if nobody could have her, she, you know, if, if I can't have you, nobody can have you. And I'm, I'm, you know, trying to, I came there to take care of my business. I didn't even realize that I was walking into a situation and, um, you know, she went on to say how the man had cut her power line a few times. He bust out his, her mother's window, slashed her tires, um, just was harassing her at her job. And it was just really sad because she said she had constantly, constantly called the police and constantly, constantly called the police. And all they kept telling her was make a report, make a report or, you know, you got to go to this precinct. And it's very disheartening. Um, when you have young ladies and young men that are having these challenges, that are having these issues, and you don't have the people that are in authority that's supposed to be able to protect you, and they treat it as if it's just uh, minute or simple when you're actually dealing with these type of domestic issues, and you've had domis domestic issues, and you've had right. challenges. Correct. <laughs> look some some <laughs> some that some that you know you have been victim of and then some that might have been caused by immaturity or just lack of communication mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about some domestic stories because listen i'm <laughs> telling you i listen this is a preview of what me and her talk about because we get down to the nitty gritty. And I think when you have this type of wisdom around or you're able to be transparent um, with the next generation, um, you you close those gaps. And I always I always love and I always remind my my uh, my listeners and my viewers about my one of my great friends, uh, Macalena Bell. And she always talks about building bridges and not gaps. And we have so many generational gaps um, and knowledge that needs to be shared. Uh, clearly, they're not putting the proper knowledge and history in our history books. So you have to dig a little further and get with, you know, people like my grandmother who have a little bit more uh, insight as to some of the things that happen. But can you talk a little bit about some of your domestic disputes? <laughs> some of them from jealousy, being jealous of my mate and of the mate being jealous of me. Okay. And you start off with pushing each other. Okay. And you can curse each other out. And then you make up. And then some things are almost unforgivable. Mm hmm What's a what's an unforgivable thing? <laughs> well, when when they give you black eyes. Yeah. Uh you break a limb. Yeah. And back in that day, uh the majority of the people would fist fight each other, or some would carry um, a razor. Oh, Lord, you was a cutter! Straight back <laughs> razor, yeah. Straight back razor! You understand? Yeah. And and uh, we use the expression, don't mess with me. If mm. you do, you might get cut. Okay. Yeah, so that's where the cutting came from, huh? Y'all right, was some right. y'all was some cutters. No, Grandma, you um you you've dealt with some domestic issues um in relationships. What was your breaking point? What was that thing that said, you know what, we're not doing this no more. Either you you can change your ways or you can leave or I'm leaving. What was that excuse me, what was that determining factor that said, you know what, I'm not doing this no more or I can't take this no more? All right. Well, I would dis discuss it with one of my, uh, well, with my older sister, uh, with my, my brothers, and uh, get their opinion. Maybe I talked to a good friend I thought was my best friend. Mm. And uh, let's see what else. Uh, now you say you you talk to your best friend. And you you was you said who you thought was your best friend. Let's stay there for a minute. So many people um, get advice about their relationships from their homegirls, their homeboys, their their closest confidants. How important is it to get good wisdom from friendships? Because some friends encourage you to stay in relationships that are not 
healthy um, because of financial situation. And growing up back in the day, you know, a lot of the women didn't work as much. Right. And so the men were the breadwinners. Right. And so you didn't want to lose out on the income and being taken care of. And, and so you had to just deal with it. <laughs> and so. Yeah. Well, I personally would gather up my children, my stepchildren, and get an old red Chevrolet station wagon and head to Detroit, Michigan. I'm going to my sister and, and my big brothers. And the last straw, an argument that we had, I moved out because of my mother had come to live with me. I had to get her when my father passed in Arkansas. So I brought her back with me to Battle Creek, Michigan. Shout out to all the Battle Creek people. Yes. And uh, yes, I, I would come. The last thing I done, I called one night and I had been partying uh, with my friends. Uh, we had a little club and uh, we was trying to, someone was coming in with the experience to teach us how to buy your home mm -hmm. and go into your own business. Mm. And they were educating us. So uh, when I left, after the party, yeah, we were drinking. <laughs> Y'all had a little spirit juice, a little courage juice, a little yeah. crunk crunk. <laughs> and I started crying. And I said, well, I'm not going to take this anymore. And uh, I called my sister and explained to her. And she said, well, I'm tired of this. I will be there tomorrow to see about you. Mm -hmm. Unless I ring my mother. And when they came up, uh, it was a delayed party. I told my friend I was leaving. I had told uh, my other a few, two or three people, the word got around. She's going to leave. She's going to Detroit to live. And uh, the people came. Everybody came and brought a bottle just about. It's Johnny Walker Red. <laughs> Johnny Walker Red! Grandma, that's what y'all was drinking. <laughs> and teaches scotch. Yes, yeah, scotch. So y'all was getting down. Beer, had wine. Yes. And we don't want you to go. That was a, We don't want you to go. Those were the ones that didn't want me to leave. Wow. When I looked up, the children, one of the kids ran in the house and said, here's somebody out here with you all, mama. And it's two cars. Who could that be? Mm. That was my sister. My brother drove to you all, or either his friend did. Mm -hmm. They came to get me and my children and, and, and my mother. I had not taken down a, a curtain. I had not packed wow. up a, a pot in the kitchen and done any of that because I'm not going. Mm -hmm. I'm not going. And I didn't expect them to be there. So mm -hmm. it was a shock when they came. But we ended up loading up the U-Haul and headed back to Detroit. So they pretty much was like, no, you leaving for real. Even though right. you, even though sometimes uh, domestic violence, uh, domestic violent abusees, or with, I don't know if that will be a word, abusees, or the, the person who's getting abused often threatens and say, I'm going to leave. Um, sometimes the abuser uh, manipulates the situation and threatens and tells the person that they're abusing that they're going to leave. And so at this point, you were you had you were telling them that you were leaving, and so they pretty much put the fire under you and said, "Oh no, yeah, you really leaving? You you really leaving?" And right. so, what was that like? That that was scary to go off on your own with how many kids did you have at that time? I had uh, five of my own. And uh, four stepchildren. Two of the stepchildren went to Chicago to with, be with their real mother. And the other two came to visit. And they got involved with someone who got a good job. And they moved in with me. I helped them. 
Then they branched out and got their own places, got married, <laughs> and started having their own family. Now, what would you tell a woman or man that is currently dealing with uh, domestic violence and they don't know how to get out? They don't know what, what to do, where to go, and they have kids. What would you suggest to them? What advice would you give them? Well, the advice I can give is go leave, you know, and take your children with you and start a new life, get your job, uh, meet someone else. Now, speaking of that, Grandma, you we have shared um a lot of a lot of stories. And if you're tuning in, you're listening to Yeah, I Said It and we're we're here at the Yeah, I Said It radio station. And we are talking about Domestic Awareness Month, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. My special guest is my very own grandmother, uh, Miss Elizabeth Jones, Mrs. Elizabeth Jones, Mrs. Jones, Mrs. Jones, Mrs. Jones. Yeah. Did you like that song when it came out? Yeah, that was popular, Mrs. huh? Jones. Oh, excuse me. Um, so I wanted to go back, and you you were talking about um, just getting out, take your children, and go. I remember, and, my, and I know this is to be true because my mother told me the same story. Uh, my father used to abuse my mother and they used to fight. And I remember my mother telling me that you told her, <laughs> don't be letting him beat up on you. You better take something and crack him upside the head. <laughs> and that was your own son um, right. that that you didn't raise to be an abuser. abuser. You didn't raise him to um, hit or fight women. And here you are telling my mother, which is your daughter-in-law, to knock your son upside the head for <laughs> abusing her. You're right. What was that like? Well, I was telling her the truth because I would fight back. Have different ways I wouldn't cook. I may not clean up for a while, and I would just show him what's what's gonna happen if if I leave. Mm -hmm. And yes, stand behind the door with a baseball bat when he get him stayed out. Good <laughs> night. Uh, run away with his friends and stay for two or three days. And yeah, yeah it was you know hardship, and when you was working too. I was working, of course, mm -hmm. and uh, I always kept a job, so we had to spend my resources and his to survive, because at one time, it was like, he didn't make but $86. $86? Yeah. Jeez. Uh, per week. $86 a week? I wouldn't know what to do. Yeah. Lord Jesus, help us. So when you, when you were telling my mom, giving mm -hmm. my mom that advice... To beat your son up, your biological son. What was what was that like having to give that type of advice to someone you know you didn't raise to be like that? How did it make me feel? I felt good and I felt sorry for her. So that's why I told her you fight back and he'll stop fighting. Sometimes it doesn't work that way. Like I said, get a baseball bat and hide behind your door. Knock him out when you when he come in. So different ways of uh, violence are, are protecting yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Grandma, we, we're going to switch gears a little bit. Um, we talked about, you know, your breast cancer um, and how you were diagnosed with stage four breast cancer. We talked about um, the challenges that you had to deal with with domestic violence. And so now here we are fast forward in education and it's also literacy awareness month. And you came here um, from Arkansas with a little bit of education, but you right. had the will and the drive and determination to make some stuff happen. How important is education um, to you? And how do you feel about our young people right now? Do you feel like they're missing basic life skills because you know technology is fast it's moving fast but like the basic 
Right. You know, the basic things that you learned cleaning up, how to sew, how to write a letter, you know, just basic, basic living. And yeah. and you didn't have a book. You know, you guys had to steal books or read, you know, um, on the low low, you know, because you didn't want people to know that you knew how to read or, or you know, that you were educated. And now that you have our young people have so much access to education how, right. how do you feel about that? Do you feel like they take advantage of it? Do you feel like they don't They don't take advantage of it? Some take advantage of it and others do not. But you should. Don't stop. And uh, don't give up. Uh, you want to better your condition. You need your education. So stay in school, in somebody's school. If you graduated from high school, you need to further your education. Go to some reputable college. Absolutely. Now, Grandma, during this, during the time where you were having uh, these challenges and these disputes, you mentioned that drinking was involved. Right. Um, do you think that a lot of domestic violence or domestic violent attacks or challenges that couples face have alcohol or drugs involved that alter your way of thinking and alter your way of communication? Sure, leave, say no and leave it alone. Stop find, finding new ways to uh, take drugs. Yeah, cause you know, they out here drinking lean, they out here popping Xanax, you know, pain pills that they gave you for for dealing with breast cancer. They're taking them and crushing them and putting them in drinks and actually pretty much just drinking to go to sleep. <laughs> like, I, you can go to sleep for free. You don't got to buy no drugs to go to sleep. Knowing that, you know, the different things that have changed within the last 50, 60 years and what you're used to seeing, um... What, what are you most proud of when it comes to just being a black woman that you've been able to see accomplish or get to to get to witness as as an 80 year old woman? Some things that you are grateful that you that God allowed you to stay alive to witness and see. Voting is one thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, the job have expanded for uh, Afro-American people. Mm -hmm. What? Afro-American people. And yes, Afro-American. Yeah. You just gave a whole new <laughs> <laughs> ethnic Afro-American. Well, black. <laughs> yeah, black race. So, uh, yeah, time has changed. And you should encourage your children if you have children, to better themselves and better their lifestyle than you had, perhaps. And the main thing, you keep believing in God. You have to get out and do some things yourself. You have to make things happen. You try to get with people that's doing some things rather than talking about them. Oh, that's nothing. I don't want any part of that. That's like, to me, it's an envy or hate type of thing. I don't want you to get uh, ahead in life. So I have this little gig over here, and you run over there helping them, thinking they're doing things for you, but they're not. You're paying. Mm -hmm. And and then when you find out uh, uh, they're taking your material and using it with someone else, yeah, and and that's a hurting thing. So you have to be careful, real careful about who you trust and who you believe in. Some things you can go to your pastor if you belong to church and yeah. ask for ask for help. And uh, now they have organizations like uh, AA mm -hmm. meetings. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you go there for drugs mm -hmm. and a lot of different therapy. 
Yeah. Therapy is wonderful. Have you ever had therapy before, Grandma? Yes. Why do black people not like therapy? I don't, I think that's one of the most freeing things. My therapist, she was Arabic. Her name was Rhonda. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was an Arabic lady. Her name was Rhonda. And I remember I felt like if I go to therapy, these people are gonna think I am a nutcase. I am crazy. And <laughs> <laughs> I was so against it and I just sat there and she was like well I'm whenever you're ready to talk you can start and I was just kind of like I'm not about to talk to this lady she don't know me she don't know what I went through you know and I'm talking to the therapist and um it was the most freeing thing that I've ever experienced like I felt one she didn't know none of the people I was talking about uh, <laughs> which which was lovely <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so I could expound on as much as I wanted to. Mm -hmm. And it was just, it was, it was therapeutic. It was free. And why do you think that, why do you think that black people, African-Americans or people who have looked at therapy as a bad thing? Cause white people go to therapy all the time. They have a, their therapist on speed dial. Right. We, we don't, we, 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 we hide things we hide behind things we don't deal with things that have happened to us and so then we grow up and we're dealing with all of these emotional distresses because we didn't deal with them when they happened why do you what's one of the reasons or what do you think is one of the reasons why we don't want to go to therapy or we don't like going to therapy well for one thing like you just said the person is a stranger to you and then with your therapy it can be for physical therapy, uh, for your mind, mm -hmm. uh, then occupational yeah. therapy. Mm -hmm. And it teaches you things like how to dress, how, how to dress yourself. Uh, and Yeah, uh, just get your the, the physicality, your body moving and different things of that nature. So when you went to therapy, did, did it help you? Did you feel like you? Yes, I looked forward. You look forward that. to it. Me too. I looked forward to therapy too. It became, it became very um, liberating. And sometimes we hold things inside because of fear. And fearfulness will cause us not to expound on things that are hurting us. What? Was it hard for you to talk about having breast cancer to family and friends and people that? Yes, and, and it's still hard because I don't want to accept the fact that I do have it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, I did not choose to uh, have... have uh, the breast cancer? The, uh, no, have it removed. Oh, have the uh, the lump removed, the operation. Because they wanted to have operation. They wanted to um, get it removed, right? Right. And I just felt that I was too old to have the operation. Mm -hmm. I may not survive it. So I decided to take my chances on the, the, the cancer when I spread mm -hmm. by taking my cancer's a prescribed medication. Yeah. And to eat properly. Which you've done. You you have like totally your doctor even said like you've totally transformed in health um since the diagnosis. Um just you were frail, you had lost a lot of weight, you were weak and like now you're you're just so full of so much life and you were then as well because last year we were carrying you into your 80th birthday. Right. <laughs> Uh, the day that you, on your birthday was... was a week from that, from all, from not liking the food that uh, was being served to me. I guess because, you know, it wasn't seasoned the way that we cook. <laughs> I and, grandpa, you was in there tripping I, over the I would have someone, bring me some hamburgers, bring me uh, chicken sandwiches, and... Uh, Fix me some soup, and then I got wise. I noticed some of the other the, my roommate had soup. She had a little pot that she could warm it up. She had her own look. She had her own. Y'all had a special room. Oh lord! 
No, we didn't have a special room. Uh, the head nurses do. Mm -hmm. And they would warm your food up if you uh, ask. Okay. Because sometimes when it be delivered... Um, it gets cold it gets by the cold. time it gets to you. Right. So, oh, go ahead. Oh, so it was a, a thing like that. And, and, and I wasn't used to the food, so it just didn't taste right. I've always wanted to have a vegetable or two veg vegetables when I cook. And, and um, my diet says no fried food. But the man say, go ahead and eat you some fried food. Yeah. And then when you know it, you uh, your stomach has gotten messed up too. Yeah. So now you suffering with stomach problems, gastritis. Mm -hmm. Uh, then you get upset about a bunch of little things, and you look at your daughters and your grandchildren. And your great grandchildren, how they are being brought up, and all the things is for them. Yeah. That they would wish for. Yeah. 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 So, um, quick long story short, yeah, it's it's uh disturbing sometimes, and you can become depressed. Yeah. And then you don't want to go any place because you feel like, well, I'm a burden. I'm, I'm, you know, you start wondering, Lord, am I going to go soon? Or yeah. Will it be later? Yeah. Uh, you know, now, who's going to take care of me? Supposedly I get bedridden. Yeah. Then in the hospital, they kept one, wanting to uh, put, put me in a hospital. Hospice. Yeah, you know I wasn't going to let that happen. No, that and, wouldn't happen. Uh, <laughs> I don't think nobody uh, wanted that to happen. So when it, it said that to me, that really hit me. All right, you suffer with high blood pressure. Then that's affecting your heart. Yeah. So then you look up, you got a got heart problem. Are you suffering with high blood? You got gastritis. Now you got cancer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So all you can do is just pray to God, keep me Lord, or heal me Lord. Yeah. And believe, and miracles have been performed, so you just have to focus. Now, you talked a little bit about uh, depression, and I know that my father, your son, uh, committed suicide the day after Thanksgiving in 2006. Yes. And... um we know that some of the characteristics of suicide victims are depression, um, mental illness, dealing with um, their mindset. And I talked last week about protecting your mind and then to turn around and bury my brother, um, who they tried to say he committed suicide. I don't believe that at all. I definitely believe that my brother was killed in prison. Um, but knowing, knowing how the mind can really play tricks on you and manipulate your thought process and make you feel less than, it makes you feel, you know, who cares about me? Does anybody truly love me? Um, you know, and you mentioned that, you know, during your transition and during your illness and having stage four cancer, a uh, stage four breast cancer, how the, your mind became, you know, you became depressed and just your thought process had changed. And if you're tuning in, you're listening to your girl, Jaja on Yeah, I Said It, on Yeah, I Said It Radio. And I am here in the studio with my special guest, Mrs. Elizabeth Lofton-Jones. And we are here and we're talking about uh, domestic violence. We're talking about Breast, Can Breast Cancer Awareness Month as well as liter Literacy Awareness Month. And she's just expounding on her journey uh, with transitioning, being diagnosed with cancer, transitioning with uh, dealing with relationships with domestic violence and how those things have affected her and how they're affecting our generation right now. And knowing that all of these things and all of the things that you've dealt with, and here we are having a, a Supreme uh, Court appointee, uh, Brett Kavanaugh, that was just a, a appointed, one of the nominees who won as the judge, well, not won because he didn't run against anybody, but um, that's now going to be 
one of the lifelong judges on the Supreme Court, highest court in the government, um, on the judicial side. How does that make you feel knowing that they just let that, let him just become a judge like that? Just like, despite all of the stuff that has gone down. Because some of the people voted and, and others did not vote. So he won. So how do you, what's, well, how important is it for people to get out here and vote? It's very important. And the, uh, the younger generation, your generation, my grandchildren, my great grand, you need to encourage each other. Come on, let's let's sign up and let, let, let's uh, go and vote. Yeah. Then you t tell a friend or two, <laughs> be sure and vote. Well, come go with me. I'll, I'll come pick you up. I, however, get them in uh, involved. Involved. Yeah. So, did you ever have to deal with any segregation or discrimination when you went to try to vote back in the day? Yes. Sometime uh, they supposedly would run out of material for you to use. Uh, so they would tell y'all they ran out of ballots so y'all couldn't vote? Yeah. Wow. And then, uh, let's see how the incident. Well, incidents like uh, someone get in front of you and uh, you get angry because they broke, broke, broke the line. Yeah. Like uh, if you and your friend is in line and mm -hmm. I come in and that's a long line. Right, you I cut. come in. And, and cut, get in the line with you all. Yeah. Well, that's a fight. Okay. But it would be, you know, like a fist fight. So fight they would start the, they would start a brawl at the voting site. Right. Just to distract the voters from being able to vote. Yes. And you would be called names. They would use the, uh, the N word. They would call y'all niggas or niggers. Right. Okay. Um. What? I lost my thought. Well, go get it back. Listen, it's your girl, Josh. Are you listening to Yeah, I Said It on Yeah, I Said It Radio? And I'm with my special guest, uh, the Mrs. Elizabeth Jones. And we're talking about just encouraging one another to get out here and vote. It is extremely important. The way that our lives are being shaped and formulated, it is a historical time right now. So that we, um, it is important that we get involved. It's important that we encourage one another to do our due diligence and, and truly support one another. I um, reported today in one of my classes, um, one of the top news stories, um, one of the DPD officers um, was, uh, he he shot one of the, uh, a suspect who was holding a young lady hostage um, at gunpoint. And this happened yesterday on Detroit's east side off of I-94 and Gratiot. And he was at somebody else's house chilling, right? And he heard outside of the door an argument of a man and a woman. They were arguing. And during this time frame, he comes out the door and he, you know, proceeds to say, is everything all right? Um, and he notices that the guy has a gun to the girl's head. And he's telling the guy, I'm DPD, put your gun down um, or I'm going to shoot you. And so he ended up shooting the suspect who, excuse me, in fact, was getting ready to shoot the young lady. Now, my challenge or my concern is we have these domestic violence issues or these challenges. And sometimes young ladies don't know how to exit or some young men don't know when to give it up. Just let this relationship go. Uh, this person is not the best person for you. Or uh, this may not be the best relationship for you to get involved in. How important is it for you to know the signs? Because we we get the signs. We get the signs when we dealing with somebody that's crazy, mm. or, or overbearing, or, or, or you know, or overbearing, or you know, they may not be the best fit. Because I remember, um, you know, when when Tayshawn's father tried it his first time and his last time, uh, attacking me. And uh, I remember us getting into an argument and I told him, you know, you know, I don't want to be in this relationship. You know, it's it's a wrap. I've tried. We didn't try. It ain't working. And Tayshawn was a baby at that time. And I remember so vividly um, being in the kitchen 
and he had me bent over his knee and I was laying backwards, grandma, and he had me, he was choking me <laughs> over his knee, right? And I was reaching, I was just started reaching for whatever I could reach for. And I ended up grabbing all of the knives out of the, out of that little wooden thing that the knives are in. So yeah. I grabbed the knives and I had them to his neck. <laughs> And I told him, I said, if you don't let me go, there's going to be a homicide today because I'm going to kill you. And he let me because I had the knives pressed in his neck like they were in there. It wasn't just to his neck. They was in there. I'm going to cut you. That was that I'm going to cut you. <laughs> so I have these <laughs> I have these knives to his neck. Right. And he calls my mama. He called my mom and told my mother that I tried to attack him. <laughs> I promise you, I cannot make this up. He told my mother on the phone that I had attacked him. My, I went, he put me out. He told me, well, you can leave and my son is staying here with me. So Tayshawn stayed. He put me out the house. He locked me out and I sat in my car. Um, a car that my dad had got me. He had got me a Ford white, uh, station wagon. And I was driving back and forth from college and I went and sat in the car and my mom pulled up, zoomed up in the driveway, walked past, right past me and my sister, Tony and Tracy, they were there. They walked right past me and they went right into the house and he went and told them, you know, I tried to stab him and this, that, and the third and look at the scratches on my neck and all of this or whatever. And, um, it was so crazy because it did it, it escalated a lot further than what it needed to mm -hmm. and sometimes we ignore the signs of things that we have to pay attention to when it comes to who we decide to shack up with mate have sex with um have a relationship <laughs> with have children with because mm -hmm. we're so used to looking at them physically uh, they look good. They got a body. They got a booty. They got money, you know, or, you know, they got a good job. But we don't really look at the core values of a person's character. You know, do they have good problem solving skills? Are they a nice person? Do they communicate well? Um, are they looking to abuse you? Do they have a history of abuse? Um, have they been abused? And a lot of times, a lot of men have yes. been abused. True. And they're carrying that that hurt and that fear and those those pains that they've had to deal with um, younger as a young person and a young adult. And they and they lash out in their relationships because they have not dealt with those internal mm -hmm. issues. How important is it to be careful who you date and who you mate? <laughs> yes, you have to be careful. And like you said. You all these uh, things that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, females should look toward those things. If it start off from jealousy, yeah. If it's you're fighting over money, yeah, that's a big one. Fighting over money is a big one, right? Uh, various things. Just you have to be brave, and and you know, like I said, go to God and pray, and if you're jealous, if you're being over, over uh, possessive, yeah, then you have to look at yourself first and try to try to not uh, force this on uh, your mate, and then maybe you two can come to a conclusion that hey, we aren't meant for each other. Yeah. And you go ahead and get out the relationship. But lately, these men, it's various things that's happening. Okay. Every day, you hear something on the news. Yeah. Or you see it. And it's a lot of black people that they blow us up or show our faces real large. But then we're committing crimes. And some uh, other races of people mm -hmm. are doing the same thing. Yeah. Some are getting life. Yeah. Some get off. Yeah. Bill so, Cosby. Yeah. It's in the, in, <laughs> yeah. The, in the system. Right. They go back 
30 years or more back what happened to them. Mm -hmm. And people don't just didn't didn't believe that George. Yeah. And when they voted, if he didn't come out, come out of one vote of yes, that uh, made the that difference. Made the difference. That made the difference. And you know what's so funny? Um, Democrats didn't have any part. I don't guess in the voting. Well, you know what? It's important that um, when you're when you have initiatives and programs that are on the floor, um, it's important for a, a particular party to rule the house, which allows them to have voting power. And one of the things that we didn't have right now in the house is that we don't have a mass majority of voting power so what they wanted to do was persuade those individuals who had voting power on the democrat and republican side about the importance um and as well as exposure of these situations and i know that you mentioned um uh, being possessive and being jealous you know, those are those are some of the characteristics that you have to be mindful of when it comes to being in relationships, because if you don't self assess yourself, am I a jealous person? Do I do I get envious quickly? Um, am I possessive? Am I over possessive? Um, am I in competition with my spouse? Because I remember uh, when I was married to my ex-husband, I, I found myself feeling like I was married to a competitor. Um, <laughs> And it was so crazy because we started off so, so well, you know, isn't that crazy mm -hmm. how you can start off, you meet somebody, you fall in love mm -hmm. and, and you, you know, you think they're going to whisk you off and, and you, you feel so great about the decision. And then you start getting to know them for real and you start getting to know there are things about them you don't like. And then you start getting to notice that there are some behaviors that don't work well with yours and not to say that he was wrong or bad or anything like that. Um, but we were very different and I, I think that um, because of our differences, it causes us to look at each other as competition and not complimenting one another. And I remember um, specifically, I found myself being a little jealous because, you know, he was a physical trainer. His physique was all, you know, you know, all cut and everything. And so here I am all flabby and shabby looking, you know, I was cute. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't an ugly bucket, you know, but it was the fact that I felt jealous and intimidated because, you know, I could tell when people would look at us like, okay, well, he's physically fit and she's cute, but you know, she, you know, she got a little tone to her. And so I found myself being, you know, jealous or, or being possessive and, and kind of doing my own thing and looking at every female that he trained as like, oh, you know, is, is he doing something with her? You know what I mean? Because she is this or this, that, and the third. And so when you're dealing with um, a mate that is jealous or possessive or, you know, you see those signs, don't ignore them. Don't ignore those signs because the young lady um, was fearing for her life. And I was sit literally sitting there um, as she's calling the police. I was sitting there as the guy was harassing her. And, you know, these these cases sometimes end in death and before you're killed or you're killing someone else you have to really think about is this worth it is this relationship really worth it is this relationship worth me going to prison is this relationship worth me dying because there are a lot of women um and and, and women are notorious for this they they uh they get them a man and they want a man so bad that they end up allowing certain things to happen to their children because they want to keep that man. All right. And it puts a lot of children at risk because they want to be in a relationship so bad. What would you say to single women who want and desire to be a wife? Because you've been married twice. All right. Um, and both marriages lasted quite some time. They weren't quickies. Like man was, man was a man was a quickie. <laughs> he was a hit and a quit. <laughs> uh, you're listening to Yeah, I said it on Yeah, I said it radio. It's your girl Jaja, <laughs> and I'm here with my special guest, Miss Elizabeth Jones, my grandma. Now listen, I had a quickie marriage. Now you've had two marriages that were a uh, longevity. Um, you've had children from one, and then you've just had a longer uh, marriage with the other. How long you and Granddad been married? What twenty seven years? Forty years. You and Granddad been married forty years. Lord yeah. Jesus. Now, out of those 40 years, for, for these young women out here that, that want to be married and they want to be a wife, 
what would you encourage them to start focusing on in terms of prepping themselves? You know, because people don't really realize um, the importance or the responsibility of marriage. You think uh, you just want to hook up with somebody, have sex all the time. And, you know, what, what are some things that women and men need to do to prep themselves for marriage? Oh, to prep themselves for marriage. Well, first of all, you want to look at uh, <laughs> your mate, uh, find out if we like the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, say, for instance, I go to church and I'm participating in our auxiliaries and then he is going to church. But then, like you said, you're still competing there in a sense of speaking so what you want to do is figure out what type of man you want yeah so you're going to want one that's working yes a bmw black man working <laughs> <laughs> the next thing is uh uh him having a job though yes. i said that you got to have some money honey right and then he's free hearted uh, he will give you a uh, help you so we start off going to dinner, going to the movie. Uh, dating. Yeah, you're dating. Collecting data, as my bishop would say. Oh. Got to collect that data. Oh, okay. And then uh, <laughs> hope you'll find these things in him. Then you, you have to look at yourself. Like I said, what things you like. Hopefully he likes the same thing. Yeah. Now... You cook, you still cook. Yes. I mean, like you cook for real. Like you be cooking neck bones. I come over there, y'all. <laughs> She's supposed to be laying, chilling, relaxing. She has cooked a whole full course meal. And I think that's because you have cooked every day. I remember coming um, to your home and uh, there was never a time you didn't have food. Um, and I don't know, I didn't know your financial situation. You know, I didn't know, you know, what it, what it was like to really, um, take care of a family the way that I do now. But every time I would come to your home, you always had a cake. <laughs> you always had food already prepped. Um, you always had a open door policy for letting, uh, people who didn't have anywhere to stay. Uh, to come live with you. You've had quite a few family members, friends, and loved ones that have slept on your couch, slept in an empty room, um, in a basement. Um, you've cared for quite a few kids that were not yours. They were somebody else's. <laughs> um, you have had the opportunity to nurture and take kids to school. Um, and, you know, just, just being a woman, taking care of the responsibilities of others how important is it for women to prepare themselves for a mate? Because you had you had a home, you kept it clean, you had meals prepped, and those weren't just the only things you did because you were also a nurse. Right. You also cared for other people. How oh, how yes. important how important was that for you to to have those characteristics to be able to share that with someone else? Well, you have to uh First of all, you got to love, you got to, you may not like your, uh, your patients, but if that's what you want to do is work in a hospital, go for it. Yeah. Uh, Shout yeah. out to Nurse Tracy. Right, right. Get, go, go that way in the education, become a nurse, a nurse's assistant, or I think you call them CNAs mm -hmm. now. But anyway, that's you can't be mean to your patients or to to your clients because their family gonna come around, perhaps, and they're not gonna like how you are treating that person. And it does happen in yeah. nursing homes. A person will not eat well, so you have to feed that person. You may have two feeders, yeah, or three feed feeders. And okay, you 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 try to get all of them together, and I've seen people like shell food and the patient. That's treating them, right? 
and and uh, but you be trying to help help the person. Yeah. Because uh, they probably say, well, you know, they give up. Uh, I'm going to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, like I said, take up some training. Yes, yes. And plenty of it is available. Listen, plenty of it is available. Listen, it's your girl, Zha Zha. You're listening to Yeah, I Said It on Yeah, I Said It Radio. And I'm in the studio with my special guest, the Mrs. Elizabeth Jones, stage four breast cancer survivor, domestic violence survivor. We got to have more survivors out here than we do victims. And not only that, but we have to be able to share our stories, expound on them, and not allow fear to um, hold us captive. Um, who the sun has set free is free indeed. And it's nothing like being liberated from your pain. Um, one of the things that I love about the Me Too movement is that people are being liberated from things that have tormented them for so long and for so many years. And I'm sitting next to a, a miracle. I'm sitting next to a blessing. I'm sitting next to a strong, phenomenal woman. And I just pray that I can I continue to, to walk in your footsteps and be just as strong as you. Before we end the show, what you want to tell the people? What you want to tell them? What up, though? <laughs> be good. And God bless you. Yes. Listen, you heard it first from Yeah, I Said It. It's your girl, Zha Zha. Before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. And I know you heard me the first time. I'm in the studio with my special guest, Mrs. Elizabeth Jones. Listen, she told the people, y'all, get on the bus. Listen, fight for your rights. Get out here and vote. Uh, don't be out here with the, what granddad usually say, don't be out here with them baggy pantsers. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you know what I'm saying? So listen, shout out to all those people out here. Tune in next week. I got another special guest. I have uh, Shannon Smith. He's running for DPS school board. He is going to be in the studio with us next week. And I have, oh, you know what? And I failed to mention, there is an event on Saturday, October 13th. It is Put It On The Table. It's a real discussion, real issues, real solutions given by Detroit Fitness. And it is with uh, my home girl, Miss Patty Dukes. Um, and that is Saturday, October 13th from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Patty Dukes Jordan is the host. It's going to be at 21125 Northwestern Highway in Southfield, Michigan. Now, the tickets are $25. They also have a VIP ticket. They also have meet and greets and reserve seating. Make sure you go out and support this initiative. Uh, the special guest master trainer is Anoa uh, Adja. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Anoa Adja. It's your girl, Jaja. You're listening to Yeah, I Said It. If you want to be on the show, you want to be a guest, you want to advertise with us, make sure you tune in. Make sure you check us out. Email me, and I would love to have you. Listen, Grandma, you want to tell them something else? No, that's all. That's all. Have a blessed day. You are <laughs> hilarious. I love it. It's your girl, Jaja. I'll see y'all next week. <laughs>